percent sure if we are or not, so um, I'm going to stand here being congenial in case the world can see me right now. And if we're live, then hello and welcome to the first video live stream of the Moog One synthesizer. I'm Amos Gaines. I'm a product designer. I helped work on this instrument along with an amazing team of artists, engineers, musicians, and people who combine all of those skills over about the past five years. And uh, so this is a big day for us. This is the culmination of a lot of work. And uh, so far, the response has been good. I really hope people like what we've been doing here because we've put our hearts and souls into this instrument and uh, really tried to deliver everything that a modern polyphonic analog synthesizer could be. So uh, my intention this morning is to just walk through the instrument a little bit for people who now know that this exists and is a thing and want to know more details. So I'm going to do, you know, overview the oscillators, the filters, the modulation possibilities, the mod matrix, the depth of programming the instrument, the effects. There's really too much depth and too much complexity to get into the nitty gritty of every aspect of this instrument in one 30 minute live stream. So that's why we're going to be doing multiples of these over the next few days and weeks so that we can really dig into all of the capabilities that this instrument has to offer. But uh, to start with, I'll dive in with the oscillators. We've been talking a lot about the oscillators on the Moog One. They are a new design that uh, we've been working on over the past several years, and they provide some really interesting new capabilities. They're based on the classic sound of the Moog. We made sure that there was a sawtooth in there that is a gorgeous Moog sawtooth, and then we also provided some really interesting new capabilities. Uh, we have what we call a variable core, where you have a triangle core mode for the oscillator that can, has continuous control over the rise time and the fall time of the waveform. And you can modulate that in real time, you can dial it in. So I'm just going to initialize a preset right quickly. And this is a simple one sawtooth patch. This is not designed to, you know, blow your ears off with sonic glory, but in fact, it's a really good sounding. <laughs> really good sounding basic core waveform that you have to start with. But uh, one of the other interesting things about it is uh, right now I'm in sawtooth mode, so this wave angle knob here allows you to control the reset time of the sawtooth. And the reset is when it snaps from zero to maximum, and that's what provides the really high-end harmonic content of the waveform. And by adjusting the wave angle, you can roll off those high-end harmonics in a way that is like using a filter, but in fact it's entirely different. It creates a really interesting sound like this. And you can attach modulators to that. You can modulate it with an envelope, um, you know, or LFOs, and that's without even using any filtering, you have this really interesting control over the harmonics of a sound. It creates a unique tonality that I'm really looking forward to, uh, to hearing people explore. And um, so in triangle mode, again, that's where you can go uh, all the way from a sharp sawtooth to a pure triangle to a reverse sawtooth, a ramp wave. And again, this gives you really dynamic control over, uh, over this, the tonality of, of the waveform. <laughs> Clicking is just from a sharp envelope, so. So that's one half of the oscillator. The other half of the oscillator is a pulse wave generator, and there's a continuous mix control between the two. With the pulse wave oscillator, you have your classic square waves. and you have full control over the pulse width. From, from extremely skinny to fully square, and some really magical things happen when you start to mix those continuously variable waveforms. Uh, 
uh, and that's just all within one oscillator. So you can do a lot of sound design, a lot of timbral sculpting within one oscillator itself. Uh, and then, of course, you have three oscillators per voice on a given timbre. And the Moog One being tri-timbral, you can layer up to three timbres together. So you can have up to nine oscillators on a single note, each of them modulating the harmonic content of the individual waveform. In addition, you have FM capabilities. You can control the beat frequency of one oscillator against another, uh, which was something we introduced on the Sub 37. You know, you can do frequency offsets. So here's two oscillators right quickly. And of course, uh, if I add just a little bit of beat frequency detuning, you can thicken that up a little bit. Um, that gets, you know, once you start adding oscillators and sound sources together, you can really get a lot of interesting variety going on. In addition, the mixer, uh, the sound sources that you get include a ring modulator uh, and a dedicated noise source, which we'll get to in a moment. <laughs> Let's see, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but I will jump over to the ring mod. The ring mod by itself gives you some really nice and interesting timbres, and you can choose which oscillators are uh, directed to the ring mod, either one and two or two and three. Uh, and that's nice if you're using one oscillator by itself to sort of create the fundamental tone, and then the other two to do interesting ring mod effects. So here's the ring mod with uh, two oscillators. This is oscillators two and three, and they're tuned to each other. Now I'm going to adjust the frequency and you'll hear the ring mod effect come in. Add a little bit of release time. You can get all kinds of nice enharmonic sounds. And of course, you can apply modulation to these things very easily. And, uh, you know, it's very easy to get off into sci fi, uber modulated wonderland, which I'll try not to do too quickly because I'm, you know, I'm trying to go through the basic sonic palette of the instrument. But that's. Just a little taste of what you can get going. Again, that was shaped with no filters or anything like that, wide open. So if you were like, well, that was interesting, but I didn't like these harmonics or those harmonics, we haven't even gotten to the actual subtractive synthesis part of the instrument, which is taking those raw sound sources and shaping them through the extensive filter section, which we'll get to shortly. Um, I'll just quickly uh, go to FM and let's see. So we'll do oscillator one modulating oscillator three. So. This is just oscillator three. And now I'll turn up the FM amount. And quickly you get into an amazing sonic character. Now that's very untamed. I might want to roll that off in the filter section a little bit. Apologies to any real musicians out there who want to hear me playing a different scale. Uh, I'm not a player player. I don't have chops. I program and design. Uh, so, you know, just bear with me as, as we probably stay in C for a while, but that's totally okay. This is really about the tonality and the timbre. And uh, of course, you can bring your own musical ideas to this instrument and fully realize them. But so yeah, FM gives you a really, really interesting sonic character totally different from the raw oscillators by themselves, which again, we're just listening to one of right now. So we've heard ring mod, we've heard FM, we've heard some of the basic wave shapes. Uh, we haven't heard pulse width modulation, so shout out to Nick Bat. I'll go ahead and get that going here. We'll go to pulse wave, turn on a couple oscillators, 
And um, you may be seeing that I'm using multiple switches here in the mixer section. I'm going to jump over and talk about that in just a moment. But uh, that was that modulation I had going from earlier. So let me just uh, dial this back in to sensibility. That is that is simple pulse width modulation with one LFO. Um, let's see. I'm, I'll get back to that when I start talking about the modulators. I'm going to jump over and talk about the filter for a minute before we run out of time. So the I've been making much lately about the state variable filter. The state variable filter was newly designed for this instrument. It's not a copy of any specific previous synthesizer. It's just the fact that OTA-based state variable filters sound amazing, and we knew we wanted something that could do band pass, that could do notch, that could do a really crisp surgical high pass, because when you have this many oscillators over this many voices, you really need to be able to sculpt and tame the sound so that it fits in with other instruments, so that it fits in with your mix, and so that you can create wildly different tonalities of synthesizer sound. And so the state variable filter allows that, in addition to the unquestionable goodness of the ladder filter, which was a given that we would have to include a good instance of. And so we did. It's a ladder filter very similar to the Voyager that has selectable uh, poles, uh, selectable slope, 24, 16, 12, or 6 dB per octave. Uh, the state variable filter section, it's actually two complete state variable filters. Um, you know, each of them is, has a 12 dB per octave slope. And you can, you have a lot of flexibility in the filter section. Let's start in the mixer. So in the mixer, you've got your three oscillators, your ring mod, and your noise source. And then you have these individual enable buttons for sending each sound source to the SVF, to the ladder filter, or to both filters uh, together. And so you can have, uh, this is a really nice way to create sounds. You can have one sound source that's just going to the state variable filter, for example. So this is oscillator one going to the state variable filter. Let me just uh, go back over to a nice sawtooth here. All right, and so I'll crank up the resonance. We're in low pass mode on the state variable filter right now. And uh, that resonance can get very hot. So I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. But the idea is you've got these amazing peaks. One of my favorite things about an SVF is that you get these singing, musical, ringing overtones that, uh, you know, especially with something really bright like a sawtooth wave, you can, they just pop out so crisply when you turn up the resonance. All the way up the harmonic series. And the harmonic series is the foundation of so much music that you can just play around in there forever, and it's wonderful. Um, so that's one oscillator going into the state variable filter, uh, and I'm going to turn on a nice slow LFO and route that to that state variable filter, so I'll turn it down a little bit. have a mix control between the state variable filter and the ladder. So I'm going to switch the mix over to the ladder filter, and we now hear nothing because I'm not sending any oscillators to it. I'll send oscillator 2 to that. And now you can control the balance of each sound source going into each filter.
use just the ladder filter, just the SPF, combination of the two. Um, again, this is off the cuff. Uh, I'm not doing sound design here. I'm just showing basic capabilities. Uh, let's see, and let's send the ring mod to both of those filters. If you dive into, uh, I haven't talked about the more buttons. This is something that we've introduced on this instrument to make editing extremely fluid and easy. Basically, every functional module, from the oscillators to the mixer to the filter, the envelopes and the LFOs, has a little triangular button in the upper right corner, which we call a more button. And pressing that instantly takes you to a page on the graphical display screen that gives you a deep dive into any additional parameters that that module has and also gives you visual feedback as you're editing. So in the case of the filter section, you can see uh, the balance between the two filters, the cutoff of each of the filters. Uh, another thing I should mention is that you can link the two cutoffs together. You can set up any relationship between the two filter cutoffs that you want and then link them together and moving either of the cutoff knobs will sweep those two filters, uh, preserving the spacing between them. <laughs> And uh, as you dive in here, you can see you can set the uh, state variable filters between series and parallel. And I should mention, you can also set the two entire filter modules, the SVF and the ladder, can be in parallel, one alongside the other, or in series. So your signal runs into the state variable filter and then out of the state variable filter into the ladder filter. And all of these different filter topologies give you a tremendous uh, reach and breadth of sound shaping capability that you have. Um, I haven't mentioned the noise module yet, so let me just open the filters all the way up right quickly here and turn on the noise. And noise by itself, you know, you might not consider it necessarily a strong musical component, but real sounds in the world almost always have some noise characteristic, either if it's just a moment of noise in the attack, or, you know, a subtle noise modulation, or, you know, a breath over the course of their, uh, of their evolution. And so having a really flexible noise module was important to us. And this one we built in, it has its own dedicated envelope so that you don't need to use another envelope just to shape the noise. You can create, you know, transitory. You can create shaped noise as a part of your sound just within the noise module without using up any of your other modulation capabilities. Uh, and you have color mix, so you can change the color of the noise very flexibly. I'll turn the sustain back on. From a very high-pitched fizzing noise through to white noise and down to a very low rumble of red noise, and which has an immense subsonic content. So between all of these things, you have an enormous palette of non-tonal sound that you can blend in to create, again, just a wider variety of sounds. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I've talked about the basic sound sources and the filters. I'm going to dive into the modulations. I'm sure that I'm going to run out of time before I get to everything. So uh, you know, be patient and tune back in as we continue to explore further. Uh, and I'll just keep going. And I see some, control some uh, questions are coming in. So I'll try to get to the question, some of the questions as I go. Uh, so one of the questions is, are all the oscillators for, are all the controls for the oscillators assignable as sources and destinations for modulation? Uh, I believe that every oscillator parameter, certainly all the ones on the panel, uh, can be easily assigned as mod destinations. And uh, I did a little example of that earlier, and I'll get back to more of that in just a moment. Uh, basically, yes, every oscillator parameter is a mod destination. 
And yes, you can do keyboard splits and layers extremely easily. Uh, I'll dive into that in a minute. Uh, in fact, let me just go ahead and do that. Um, we have a nice overhead view here that should show the center section of the console. And uh, this, is the, um, this is the home screen that you get to when you press the home button. And if we dive into the preset browser, let me pull up uh, a nice little sound here that I like. And we'll go back to the home page, and you can see here each timbre uh, of, of the up to three timbres is listed. You see the, the name of it, and then you can see on this screen, uh, this is a keyboard split. So on this side, we've got one sound. And on this side, a completely different one. And it's extremely easy to set that up. If I wanted to change that keyboard split, um, all right, so there's down in the center section here, uh, right below the main programming interface, there's a section called panel focus. And the panel focus points all the controls on the front panel at each of the individual timbres, synth one, synth two, or synth three. Uh, a timbre is sort of the saved settings that define the sound, and a synth is the actual collection of hardware voices and, uh, and modulations and et cetera that is playing at a given moment. So synth one right now is playing the timbre Sunrise 7, and if I want to change that keyboard split, I can just uh, go over to the keyboard control section, press the high range button, and press a key to change which note is the, the high range of that instrument. Press the low button, change the low range. If you press them both at once, it assigns it to cross the entire keyboard very easily. And uh, so if I switch over to synth two, if I want to adjust the range of this other layer, you know, it's very easy to do that. I'll switch back to synth one, set it to the same note. Okay, now I have a nice A-B split. It's easy to split, it's easy to layer. Um, and you can turn on or off keyboard control, meaning whether the local control plays a certain sound, it just has a dedicated on-off button on the panel. Um, so whatever synth is selected for panel focus, that's what all the panel knobs are going to edit, and the other sounds, if they're not in focus, they're not going to be affected by your panel tweaks. Uh, it's very easy to select multiples at the same time. You just press multiple panel focus buttons, and then your knob turns affect any and all synths that are selected. So you can do a filter sweep across all your layers at the same time. You can edit multi timbre layered sounds very easily, or you can just select which one you're working on. Um, all right, so let's dive into the modulations right quickly. Uh, there are four LFOs and three envelopes. There are really four envelopes because the noise envelope is also, all four of the envelopes are available in the mod matrix as sources. So if you're not using noise in a sound, you've got a free noise envelope that you can apply in the mod matrix to any destination. Um, and the four LFOs and three envelopes, all of those are per voice. Uh, but I know I've seen a lot of questions about can the LFOs function like master LFOs, so where you're playing a chord and you've got one LFO that's affecting the sound uh, in a unified way. Uh, and the answer is yes. Basically the way it works is by default when you load up a sound, uh, every instance of LFO1, you know, there's eight or 16 LFO1s depending on how many voices you have, but all of them work together at the same frequency in the same phase, so they really sound like one LFO working on all the voices. Um, you, you know. So with this sound, this sound is uh, running through the ladder filter. Oh, I see what I'm doing here. Uh, again, basically, uh, it's very easy to get it to behave like a single master LFO, but if we dive into the more page for that LFO, you see we have a ton of additional parameters here. Uh, one of the really nice things about the LFOs in the Moog 1 is that they have a continuously variable wave shape. So you can continuously crossfade between a triangle and sine for subtle modulations. Uh, if you switch over to, to the square wave, you have full pulse width modulation of your square wave LFO. I'll just turn that up a little bit. For the sawtooth, just like the oscillators, you can continuously uh, vary it between a sawtooth, a triangle, and a ramp. Uh, 
And uh, for the sample and hold, you have a continuous variation between sample and hold and noise. And uh, again, so you, you, can, you can have uh, these LFOs can be synchronized to your master clock or they can be free running. You have a lot of control over the dynamics. You have a delay time and a fade in time and a fade out time per LFO. You can also have it run continuously or you can set it to repeat just a certain number of times per note. So you can really use each LFO almost like an extra envelope generator if that's how you want to run it. Uh, and then switching over to the envelopes, um, I think I may have mentioned that you can have them reset on note on as well. That's, uh, the connection here is that if you have the LFOs reset on note on, or if you have their rate uh, or phase or anything like that modulated by a per note parameter like velocity or key pitch or things like that, then you do get truly fully independent LFOs. So you can have just a huge uh, sound with lots of independent modulations per note. Uh, a lot of people have asked about panning on this instrument. Um, each voice itself is mono, but they are all mixed into a stereo bus with a pan position per voice. So over in the VCA section, you have a pan knob that's sort of the panning for the entire synth part. You can put it anywhere you want in the stereo field relative to another part, for example. But additionally, if you really want this rich sound where voices are moving around the stereo field or are spread across the stereo field, uh, the panning of each voice is a mod destination as well. So it's very easy to set up dynamic, uh, rich panning for, uh, for your sounds. So jumping over to the uh, envelopes, as I said, again, uh, you press the envelope more page and you have this really nice graphical interface where you can see the precise envelope shape that you're creating. And uh, these are also very powerful envelopes. They have a delay time and a hold time. Uh, as well as the standard attack, decay, sustain, release, and the attack, the and delay, delay, sorry, attack, decay, and release times have continuously variable curvature, so you can get exactly the shape of envelope that you need, whether it's for copying the sound of a specific other synthesizer that has a certain envelope shape, or if you're trying to create a certain modulation that has just the right decay or release or attack slope to it. Uh, you have infinite gradation of control over, over those curvatures, so you can really get exactly the kind of sound that you want. Um, additionally, if you want to use the envelopes like LFOs, uh, we borrowed, uh, you know, inherited a lot of the features from the sub-37 and subsequent 37 to where you can loop and latch the envelopes and have them continuously cycle. Let's see. So. Oh, I think my times are too short here. All right, I'm going to re-in it because I've gotten into a strange place with my sound from demonstrating this, that, and the other thing. We're back to our nice, simple sawtooth. And again, I'll just... So this is a looping filter envelope. And you can easily hear, we now have a linear attack. But I can change that to kind of an exponential. I can speed it up very quickly, slow it down. So you have a lot, a lot of possibilities there. And each of these, uh, you know, that the filter envelope is hardwired to the filter. It's got a dedicated control for filter envelope amount, as you would expect a Moog-like synth to do. But uh, now I'll get into the quick modulation assignments. It's extremely easy to take any of these envelopes and send them to any parameter destination. 
So I'm actually going to use the modulation envelope since it's freely assignable. It does, it's not hardwired to anything. And if you press the destination button, which is the little square button that you find in the corner of the filter, amp, mod envelopes, and the four LFOs, uh, press the destination button and pick a parameter, like let's say oscillator two frequency. And just by turning the oscillator two frequency knob, I'm setting the destination. And by turning it left or right of center, I'm setting the depth of that modulation. So uh, let me see here. Let's turn on oscillator two. So, so that's just a little bit of pitch modulation to oscillator two. And if I want to keep it, I can press done here. If I decide I don't like it, I can just cancel out of there and it's gone. And another way to get linear FM on this instrument that I should mention is you can go to the LFO, set it to a nice audio rate, and then send it, uh, press the destination button, and grab the beat frequency. Beat frequency is linear detuning of the oscillator. Can I please do unison mode? Yes, I can. One moment, let me get to that. So let's see. Right quickly, uh, oscillator one beat frequency. So uh, again, FM is a tricky beast, and you have to really dial in your ratios exactly to get musical sound, but there is a ton of musical sound in there. Uh, I'm just going to pull up a nice unison sound that I made last night. It's extremely easy. Uh, I think I called it Simple Unisaw. So let's see here. Um, yeah, the browser can hold, I think we've, you know, we've calculated something like tens of thousands of, uh, of presets. And uh, you can, there's a, there are filters here for category, mood, group, and so you can easily uh, zoom in on just the sounds that you want. So this is uh, a simple one oscillator sawtooth uh, in unison, eight voices with a little arpeggiation going, uh, and it sounds pretty big. <laughs> We're out of time. There's lots more to explore, so thanks for hanging, and I will see you next time. <laughs>